For those interested, this is a melody writing assignment that I've used in other classes, and I'm just sharing it because some people are interested in get, trying to get a handle on ways in which to apply some of these melodic concepts into actually writing a real melody. And remember that these concepts can be used in any genre. This happens to be sort of a pop song type genre that, that this demo is in, but it could be applied to any type of music um, at all. So don't be, if you don't, if you're not a big fan of pop music or uh, that kind of thing, don't, don't reject the concepts here. Just go ahead and apply that, apply them to the genre of music that you like um, or you need to write for your project. So what is the concept? Well, I'm using things like um, sequences, inversions, retrograde inversion, retrograde, um, elision, that elision, that's where you cut off a phrase, you shorten a phrase. Um, I'm using interval expansion and contraction here and there, um, etc. And I'm using them to try to create, I'm coming up with a main motive, and then I'm creating, using, manipulating that to create a, what we call an antecedent phrase, a phrase which is the beginning of, of, a, of the bigger phrase. And then I'm creating a consequent phrase, a phrase that is a response to the antecedent phrase. And those together create one big phrase. All right. Then I do the same thing down here to create a second big phrase. Then I go to a B section, which obviously needs to create some kind of contrast. That's the point of a B section, is to take you somewhere new. And then I return, in this structure of this song, I'm returning to um, the original motive down here with a sort of uh, final, uh, constructing a feeling of, of finishing my a song section here. Now, how did I come up with this structure? Well, I could just come up with it just randomly, but I, in this case, I actually copied the structure of this song by Sting called Fields of Gold. Now, the repeat, the demo song that you're going to hear in a minute doesn't really sound very much like Fields of Gold because you can take the concepts and then apply them to any, like I said, anything, and you're going to, it doesn't mean you're going to end up sounding like that song that you're copying. So that song does that. That song has a main motive, which is sequenced, and then it, there's a response to that by using an inversion and so on. All these different things happen. Many of these things happen, not every single one. And um, the harmony is not the same at all, but but the basic approach is that, um, you know, there's an A section, and then when they go to the B section, it starts with a chord other than the one chord, so in that way it's similar. In Fields of Gold, it goes to the four chord. In this song, it's going to the six chord. So that creates a feeling of sectional contrast when you go to a chord that's not been featured before as the starting chord of a phrase. Um, so that's similar. And then the general structure of it, of having an A section that's eight measures long, B section that comprises a four-bar section, although it's repeated more times in uh, Fields of Gold, and then this ending phrase, which is related to the original phrase, um, is very similar to what happens in Fields of Gold. So the structurally, there's a lot of similarities, uh, but then the result could be very different. I mean, you could literally use this structure to write a heavy metal song or an R&B song or a funk song or whatever. But anyway, so that's it. And so you can see, now I'll explain... Uh, what I did with the demo version of this, which is that I came up with a main motive, there it is, and then I repeated it. So that was my, that allowed me to create my first antecedent phrase. But it sounds a little interesting because I changed the chord underneath my repetition. But melodically, I'm just basically repeating the same thing twice, essentially. That's my antecedent phrase. And then my consequent phrase was derived by using an inversion of this motive. And it, it's not an exact inversion in every, because I actually changed the one interval. I, I, instead of, an inversion of course is when you go in the opposite. So instead of going down a third, I should have gone up a third. But I decided to go up a fourth there. And then the rest of it is pretty much inverting all these intervals, doing them in opposite. So, 
I didn't go up a third, I went up a fourth, but then this goes up a second, so I went down a second. This goes up a second, so I went down a second. And this is going up a third there, and so we're going down a third here. So the rest of it is uh, an inversion. So here's the two things together. And I did what's called a, a leading. I, I, I leaded or I cut off or I shortened um, this. So instead of carrying on with my inversion and, and putting in all the, these other notes, I decided to purposely make this um, uh, a shorter phrase so that I had a feeling of more space. Having space at the end of a phrase really helps it sound like a phrase. So now I came down here and I want to create further development. So I created a diatonic sequence of motive one. And I, so basically I took this idea and I moved it to a different pitch level. So all the same diatonic intervals as this, but I just simply moved it all up a third from here to there, up a third. And then the, re the final thing was created by creating a retrograde of the last phrase, this phrase, and so this phrase backwards, um, and it creates a new consequent phrase to go with my different version of my antecedent here. So I took this idea in reverse and put it there. Then I added, I decided I wanted to, I didn't want space there, I wanted another note to lead me into, so I added this note in that led me into there. And this is a retrograde and version of phrase one. So I took this phrase, inverted it, and turned it backwards. So then I'm using a retrograde uh, of this idea here to lead me back into this. And I repeat my original motive and then end with the first consequent phrase that I originally had. Um, mostly, let's see, end with first consequent. Let's see. Not the first, it's actually the second consequence. It's ending with this consequent phrase. I should change that. So I'm ending with the second consequent phrase here. So let me fix that. Second consequent. Okay, so let's listen to the whole piece. Again, uh, this is not saying that if you do this, you'll write a musical masterpiece. It means that your music will sound like it's been developed, in, that there's a certain amount of craft going into developing the music and that it has a certain flow and musical train of thought. Once you get good at doing this, then sometimes what you write will be a masterpiece. It will be really great. And sometimes it'll just be sort of utilitarian. Um, but it's it's all about learning the craft. It's, it's You can't, there's no one formula to creating uh, brilliant music, but if you learn enough craft, you're going to be more likely to do that. Here we go, here's the whole piece. So again, by saying I'm not saying this, this is this is just a very utilitarian piece of music. This is obviously not great music, but it works. It it a comp, it is a vehicle for learning about this craft. That's really what we're talking about here. So this is uh, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to express here with this video. So hopefully this is helpful and 
you can take these ideas and apply them and create something that at least you'll get more compositional chops and then sooner or later you'll write something that you're really happy with that you'll actually be able to figure out or explain in terms of some of this theory, I bet. Okay, all best wishes.